Hi there, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. I'm Lyndon Hosking, and uh, great to have you along for another episode of Dream Fights. This is where we match up two fighters from the past, from different eras, against each other, and we break it all down and reveal who we think wins and why. It's great to have everyone back on deck this week, uh, all three of us. I'm referring, of course, to Grant, Tazzy Brown, and Mike Altamura. How are we, guys? Good, thanks, Lyndon. It's great to be back this week. I don't want to let Mike... And yourself have all the fun without me. <laughs> um, and I love matching my wits against a great Mike because um, everywhere I go around the world, mate, people have got this kind of iconic... They put Mike on a pedestal as this Yoda. Yoda, Star Wars, boxing, soccer, Peter figure, which I agree he is. But I know I'm on the same level as him. So it's all good, baby. It's good to always be with Mike and... Um, He's a bit nervous about Mateo's fight this week, so I hope he's going to be able to get through this show okay. And a shout-out to Peter Maniatis. Hope to see you soon because I haven't kicked, anyone, kicked anyone's ass for a long time, Peter. So <laughs> please come back. Let me put my foot up your ass. I'm sure he'll be back this week. So, Mike, uh, again, I know you're uh, you're a busy man, but um, we had a good one last week. We had Ernie Shavers and David Tour. I'm going to put the results up in a second, but that um, was a good choice last week. A lot of feedback about it. I'm expecting like 2% of the audience to go with my pick. So well, I'm, I'm fascinated to see. You. All right. Well, before we announce this week's uh, um, uh, uh, episode, which is mine, my, uh, this week's fight, I should say, we're going to spit it out. Let's get to last week, Ernie Shavers and David Tua. This is the result. 83% for Ernie Shavers and only 17% for David Tua. Now, Mike, I went for David Tua. I can't remember who you went for. Tua on points. And I went yeah. for, with Tua by, I think, seventh or eighth round knockout. So what it, it uh, goes to show is is that our audience out there knows the history. You would have thought the, the easiest thing to do was to go for the modern day fighter in David Tua, but Ernie Shavers, 83%. Because Ernie Shavers just passed away a few weeks ago. So he's in the I'm, news. I'm, I'm in the convinced news. of that. They've all been watching <laughs> that highlight of that grenade right hand he landed on Larry Holmes. And uh, and the knockout of Ken Norton that was in there as well. So, you, um, yeah, you. that's true. Uh, what is that? Sorry, is that you, Tazzy? Sorry, I wondered what that was there. All right, well, let's get on to this week's episode. As I said, it was my pick this week. I probably jumped or leapfrogged over Tazzy. Um, he'll be on next week. But this week, you talk about uh, wars and fights in a phone booth. This would be the epitome of that one. I'm referring to Achuro Gatti versus Edwin Valero. Um, oh. And I really like this fight, guys, because um, the fact that I don't think a lot of maybe casual fight fans know a lot about Valero, um, Mike, because he's not the most well-known guy. We'll get into his history in a second there, but... Uh, I know a lot of the fight fans know about Gaddy, presumably you know, mainly because of the Mickey Ward fights, but uh, Edwin Valerio was uh, was definitely a serious fighter as well. Yeah, I remember when Valerio was probably around 7-0, and 8-0, and of course, all first-round knockouts. I was writing for MaxBoxing.com at the time. Of course, Doug Fisher was the editor-in-chief at Max Boxing back then. Now he's editor-in-chief at The Ring Magazine. And I remember Doug telling me about this kid, this Venezuelan kid who was terrorizing sparring partners and gyms in California. And of course, it turns out that the young kid was Edwin Valerio, uh, Edwin Valerio, sorry. And there was a lot of talk just about the fact that, yeah, he was a guy who was scoring all these blitzing early round knockouts, but he had real genuine skills, good speed, a really nice jab. And in spite of what he achieved, which was an outstanding career, which, as you highlight in a moment, you know, it's his sad ending, his sad demise, a sad situation surrounding it all, which is just mm. tragic, particularly, yeah. particularly for his family, for his wife. Uh, mm. He he didn't really accomplish anywhere near what he potentially could have and would have. There was a lot of talk of him fighting Pacquiao, and that would have been an absolute mega fight guaranteed fan-friendly bout, but we'll never know quite how good he was because of his ending. Yeah, well, it was. And, and um, Taser, we'll just put, bring up his record now before we talk a bit more about him. A 27-0, 27 KOs, his first 18 fights, if you will, 
whereby first round knockout. An amazing start to his career. Look, we don't know, obviously, the credentials, a lot of them. You know, this is in South America. It's from Venezuela, obviously. WBA junior lightweight uh, champion and WBC lightweight champion. A uh, few of his uh, biggest hits there. Probably not household names, but he defended his title, I think, half a dozen times. You might be able to correct me there. But, but um, Tazzy, he uh, ended up... Um, uh, being con uh, convicted of, the, oh, sorry, arrested for his wife's uh, murder and uh, tragically committed suicide in uh, in custody. So it was a bad way to go out. But who who knows what could have happened with this guy? He was just an absolute beast. Yeah, I'm not going to discuss on what he what he done besides boxing because I said none of us know mm. what goes on in people's lives. You know, um, you know. So I'm not going to comment on that. I'm going to comment about this guy's career as a boxer, and I was a big fan of this guy. He was a, men a menacing puncher, um, you know, but he had good boxer skills, as Mike said. Um, and, you know, he, he went through, you know, the two divisions, and, I mean, um, we'll never know how good this guy could have been. I mean, we know how good he was, but, I mean, how, you know, what he could have done. He could have went up to, to 140 and, and been a champion there. would have been three divisions. There's big punches at the time. Lucas Mathise would have been a war, but I think he would have, you know, beat Mathise. Pacquiao would have been the ultimate dream fight. He was a chance against, against anyone. I mean, mm. he, um, this guy and, and all the sparring partners I've heard that sparred him. I mean, Mikey Garcia and people that I spoke to that have sparred him is just a beast, mate. So look, um, this guy, and I'm glad you you got him in, on this show, as I said, because um. <laughs> I'm talking about boxing, nothing else. And I mean, Mike, this guy's a true, yeah, true champion. He was. And Mike, he also had some health issues, didn't he? Because he um, was he only allowed to fight in Venezuela at the end of it, or, I think, because he had, he had some, a, was it heart problems or something. Yeah, he had a brain irregularity. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's essentially what it was. Um, but he was cleared and he was fine to fight. But you know, when there's like an anomaly on the brain. So certain commissions wouldn't wouldn't grant him a license because of that, but eventually I overcome that hurdle. The thing is, just watching his highlights here is I think we, we commented on it a bit about Salvador Sanchez a few weeks ago that certain fighters have habits that you look at it and it's not textbook 101 or what you would teach, but it works for them. Mm. And you see with Valero throwing both sides, and sometimes you pull back in a straight line and then you think. He's a sucker to be hit, squared up, head in the air. But it's there. He's in that position to draw a guy onto a right hook. And especially when he, when he went up in competition, he'd just do it time and time again. And you see guys crumbling from shots that they normally wouldn't crumble from. So he must have possessed just absolute sleeping pills in both hands. Yeah, well, everyone he seemed to hit, seemed to stay hit, didn't they? And um, would have been a really interesting fight with him and uh, Pacquiao, wouldn't it, Tazzy? And it's, that's <clears> a, probably the most tragic thing is we never actually got him to fight, so I see him fight some of those those real big names. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, the win over DeMarco impressed me. Mm. That was a, a very yeah. good win. And because, um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, with DeMarco, the one that beat Linares. Yeah, beat Linares and went on to be really a stalwart at 135 to he was shocked by Adrian Bronner, but still then was a contender at 140, 147 for the next decade. And, you know, realistically, Valero blitzed him. He was competitive, but Valero dominated every round of that fight. Mm. Well, let's have a look at uh, his opponent, of course, Arturo Thundergatti. Uh, if you're a boxing fan, you've obviously got to know all about Arturo. 40 wins, 9 losses, 31 KOs. Two-time world champion as well. Nine years apart, which is very impressive as well. There's some of the his biggest fights there. His wins and losses. The most notable names, of course, there. Uh, no, the trilogy, of course, of Mickey Ward, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Floyd Mayweather in there as well. So just uh, an unbelievable fighter. A very, very gutsy fighter. And... Uh, Tazzy, yeah, this guy, he knew how to throw bombs as well, didn't he? But he also led with his face and also had a bit of a tragic um, ending as well, which is, you know, another story. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, two, yeah two, you picked hmm. two, very, two very tragic um, endings for both these guys. But, yeah, look, Gaddy was right in the peak of my era. Um, you know, he was... Um, 
obviously from Canada, but Italian moved to New York, and um, you know, and he, he became a favourite there in New York and Atlantic City. Um, you know, I saw early on his wins at um, over Gabriel Rellers and and you know some. He was he was known then as coming from getting a lot of punishment, to coming back and knocking guys out. Um, and then he had a few losses to um, Angel Manfredi mm. and um, Ivan Robertson. They were two, losses, two candidates, man. both fights for fights mm. of the year. And then he and then he sort of after his loss to De La Hoya, I thought he might have turned into a journeyman. But then he salvaged his career. He went to Buddy McGirt, started started relying on his boxing skills because he could box. So Buddy McGirt encouraged him to box a bit more, move and try not to stand there and slug away. He still did when he wanted to, but he tried to encourage him to take less punishment, which prolonged his career. Um, the fights of Mickey Ward, as we all know, the first one was amazing. All three of them were great. Mm. But then he, he clearly won the, the next two after losing the first one, which I thought he was unlucky to probably lose the first one. But I mean, um, you know... Yeah, I mean, had a great career, fought everyone. Was probably the most exciting fighter of his era. Um, there he goes, beating, um, I think that's Leonardo, um, mm. Leonardo, I forget his name. Dorian. But yeah, look, mate, just a great, great, great fighter. And um, yeah, mate, just a, you know, a, a, a future, um, you know, future Hall of Famer, I think. Um, mm. You know, one of the most exciting fighters. We've had in a long, long time. Mike, what are your memories of uh, Churro Gatti? Yeah, well, he's right up there with my favourite fighters of all time. Like Tazzy said, growing growing up a massive fight fan in the 90s, Arturo Gatti was where I was at. He was, he was nicknamed the human highlight reel for a reason. And I think that it's similar to Valero in a way that because he was – remembered so much for one certain style, which is for being that glut, uh, blood and guts gladiator. A lot of people kind of forget, you know, his two displays of boxing against Tracy Harris Patterson mm. to win the world title and then to make his first defense. And that he was a really good, skillful boxer, good jab, good, devastating left hook. You see it right there, but mm. devastating left hook, especially for the body pinpoint puncher. And it was only really as he, as he aged, and grew as a champion, and that he got drawn into those fights. This is at 1.30. And as Tazzy said, once he got kind of later career where you'd consider post-prime, Buddy McGirt was able to get him to revert back to those skills, and he was able to kind of turn back the clock a little. He was still, whenever he fought, you know, De La Hoya, he fought Mayweather, fighters of that ilk, he was outclassed. But, you know, he was a really underrated boxer, good combination puncher. At 130, 135, he was a physical beast. And mm. I think that when we look at today how we match up with Valero, the interesting part is that I don't think Valero would have to, would be too anxious just to, to stand in front of him and wear receipts because Gaddy was devastating on the left side. And you guys both know the best punch to catch a southpaw with his head in the air is a left hook. Mm. Yep. Yep, no, for sure. Well, um, I think either way we look at it, it'd be, it would have been a, a great fight. Um, Tazzy, let's start with you. And uh, who wins and why? I don't even want to do this because this is a really, this is a real tough one. This is a real tough one, Lyndon. A real, <laughs> a real yeah, like I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm just guessing. I mean, like, I mean, Valaro, we don't really know. We needed more, maybe more. I mean, we know he's a vicious puncher. We know he had good skills. We know he was a southpaw. We know he's a bit probably head, head up a bit high and be able to get hit. But we know he could hit you. Gaddy has some good boxing skills when he wanted to use them. We know he's hittable as well. We know he's got a good left hook and likes to go to war. If he goes to war with Valerio... I've got to just go with a guy that was never beaten and the guy that will probably would land on Gaddy because he's, you know, and if he, it's probably a different fighter to a lot of the guys that Gaddy fought. I mean, Gaddy fought the best, but at this weight, I know Mike said he probably might have been better at this weight because he was a beast, but he's going to get hit. Valerio's track record is he gets you out of there. I'm going to go Valerio in a war, probably gets dropped himself in a, probably a fifth round knockout. Well, maybe... 
two or three knockdowns in the fight. Yeah. Okay, Mike. What about yourself? Who who wins and why? Yeah, I just I just look at it that if you're getting hurt by Rodriguez and Gabriel Ellis and Angel Manfredi and these kind of guys. Gaddy also had the two wars with Ivan Robertson that he dropped mm. two 10-round decisions in fight of the year contenders at lightweight. But let's take Gaddy at his peak. So I just think even the Gaddy that was able to hold off and outbox Tracy Patterson, Tracy Patterson was kind of a smaller guy and would sit there and box and trade with you. Whereas I think that Valero would make the fight ugly and push and force the pace. And even if Gaddy dented him with a shot or two early, he might even be able to score a flash knockdown, only because of how available Valero was to hit Russian in. I just think that you've got to go with the data that's available to you, which the data is that Valero was just a bit sturdier. And 27 times he walked in the ring and 27 times he came away with a knockout defeat, mm. knockout victory, sorry. And Gaddy was a kind of guy that if you could push a pressure and push a pace, even if his courage and his will and his fortitude and his heart and his chin held up, his skin didn't. Mm. So there's a high probability maybe Valero busts him up and stops him in six, seven rounds on cuts. And that's what I would consider the outcome to be. Yeah, I, well, that's, so that's two for uh, Valero. I, look, I tend to agree. I think, um, I, I do think that uh, I, I give Gaddy a chance because, or not more of, more than a chance, of course, it was a 50-50 fight, but being, I think he's, he's a light neater. He's a, just a, a little bit more naturally skilled. Obviously, he can take a punch, but, geez, I'm with you, Mike. How do you go past the data that's at hand? I know his level of competition was nowhere near what uh, Ashuro Gaddy's was, but just what we've got at hand, the the volume of punches and the effect they had on the opponents and the fact that Arturo Gatti was pretty easy to hit, even though he did have pretty good skills when he wanted to use it. I just think he wouldn't be able to resist getting into a war with, uh, with Valero, and I think that would be his downfall. And I think that uh, Valero wins by seventh, eighth round knockout, I would think. And, and I agree, I'm not sure whether you, with one of you said it or both of you said it, that there's probably going to be a knockdown uh, either way, yeah. at some stage, so I wouldn't be surprised if they trade knockdowns early. But I just think, yeah, Valero gets the job done in seven or eight rounds. But the other thing is, we ha we didn't really see a lot of uh, Valero going long distances. I know a couple of his later fights did, but you know, 18 first round knockouts in there. But I think, um, I suppose a little bit of gut feel as well. Just Valero just it breaks uh, Gaddy down in those middle to late rounds and, and gets him out of there. So. So that's it there, guys. Three three to zip um, for Valero, which was I must admit surprises me because I thought there would have been a little bit of support for uh, for Achuro Gatti, but um, it'll be interesting to see what uh, everyone else out there thinks as well. So, Tazzy, we're back to you next week. It's your choice. I know you probably haven't got a, a pick tonight, but have a think about it, and um, it's up to you uh, next week. I know we've got a lot on our plate this week with Cambosis Haney and Paro Jarvis. It's all happening, but... Um, yeah, it would be uh, good to see who you got next week. Right. Yeah, Lyndon, definitely just want to say, um, Mike, um, I hope Mateo gets the win for you on the weekend. I'm a big fan of that kid. Um, so I wish you all the best there, Mikey. Um, good to see you again Thank too, you. brother. Hopefully catch up for a coffee, a coffee soon when you can um, get out of Greensboro and come and see me. Um, and Lyndon, always a pleasure, brother. And uh, I feel like we bonded in America. I feel like we're we're like family now, my friend. And um, and Peter Maniatis, where are you, Peter? Where are you, Peter? <laughs> Coming for you. Well, um, yeah. All right. So let's let's uh, call it. Uh, apologies for the internet too tonight, guys. I don't know what sort of happened. It must be one of those nights. I know we're expecting. Um, some really bad weather in the next couple of days. Maybe it's what? starting to come over, I don't know. So apologies uh, for that for the viewers, but at least you could hear everyone properly, which is the main thing. And uh, as I said, Tazzy, it's up to you next week. And until then, we'll uh, see you then. And uh, thanks, guys, for uh, for coming on. <laughs>